y'all listen. I'm going to keep singing. Sing. I'm going to keep singing. Sing. I'm going to keep singing, yeah. Sing. Shit, I'm going to keep singing. Of all of Ray's musical accomplishments throughout his entire 56-year recording career, where people say he invented soul music, the number one R&B recording artist ever, one of the greatest jazz pianists and one of the greatest interpreters of jazz vocals, of all of his accomplishments, I don't think any of them are as remarkable as his accomplishments in the country and western music field. What Ray did, he brought country to the world and made it Ray Charles music. It was no longer country music. It was Ray Charles music. Broadened a base that is still ever widening today. Well, he grew up listening to it you know, on the Grand Ole Opry and got to appreciate it, and that was some of the first music he played. His first country recording came out, his last session for Atlantic Records in 1959, he did the Hank Snow song, I'm Moving On. But then just about three years later, comes the masterpiece, Modern Sounds in Country and Western Music, and the impact of that record was so great. I mean, it brought a whole new audience to country music. From 1959 through 1961, Ray was, Ray was it. And then he tells the ABC Paramount executives, I want to record an album of country and Western music. And they tell him he's crazy. Because I remember it was the first record my Aunt May and I ever agreed on. We both bought it, a big red cover, I remember that. And she went, man, I discovered this great album, Ray Charles and Modern Sounds. I went, yeah, I've been trying to tell you guys about Ray Charles for years. And she goes, yeah, but this is, because yeah, it was some kind of song she could relate to and a lot of orchestration and stuff. I said I'd laugh when you left me. I think he loved the music. I think it was an honest thing. And, you know, I mean, any music will work if it's honest. And I truly believe that. I mean, I believe Ray followed his heart and he did what he loved and uh, it brought in the audience. I mean, people all around the world were hearing country songs in a way that they never had been you know, heard before. Ray Charles always trusted his audience. And he believed there was only two kinds of music. There's good music and there's bad music. And he also was interested in the fact of putting his own fingerprints on some of these great country and western songs. Ray told me, he said, James, a good song tells a story. There was emotion, there was a storytelling aspect, uh, and it connected immediately with him. And stories were you know, a focal part of country music from early on. The Carter family, they, they, they wrote songs that told stories. Um, Jimmy Rogers, you know, singing Breakman Blues, you know, or Woody Guthrie also. I mean, so many story songs. And I know that Ray Charles was very connected to the story songs, um, as was my father, you know, from, from early on, you know. And, um, it, and it, it shows in, in what my dad recorded, you know, um, that, that he appreciated a good story song. Back in the 40s, you know, Charlie Parker was in a joint and kept playing country records on the jukebox and his friends were sort of giving him a hard time about it saying you know, Charlie why are you playing that hillbilly stuff he's it's the stories man listen to the stories stop crying but darling I need you here the release of Ray's modern sounds and country and western music albums both of them volumes one and volume two probably did more for race relations in the south than a hundred different marches because it was undeniable to the people that were listening to it that this was great music. And they didn't care if a black man recorded it. I think it's a, a really important step that this country has to keep relearning over and over and over and over again. You know? But music is a great place to learn it because guys that love to play music just love to play music. They don't care. You know, gender and, and nothing matters except that you can play. Well, I should have known. I think it impacted pop music by making country music legitimate to everybody else. I suppose it made, brought some attention to country music, but it certainly made it all right for everybody else to do. Right after Ray Charles 
recorded I Can't Stop Loving You in 62. Then Esther Phillips came and she recorded a country song called Release Me in 1962 and had a big hit with it. So it was just the idea of, I think it turned on outside producers and artists to country music and to Nashville to come here and look for songs. Throughout his career, he was on Hee Haw, and he was on um, the Glenn Campbell Show, and Johnny Cash's show, and you know he he was recording country music all the way up until the end of his life. It wasn't like he did this this one record in 1962 and then left it. I mean, all the way up until the end of his life, country music was an important part of his repertoire. Let me down.